This video is brought to you by Squarespace. That's my fucking loser ass room. I still got boxes and shit, bruh. Austin police have busted a rapper for inciting a crowd into a mob. Okay, now what about your lyrics? What about them? I was vocal about what I felt about Odd Future. All the cool blogs didn't want to post none of our music up. No one wanted to post the videos. No one liked the art. So I was like, man, you know what? Fuck this. Best new artist goes to... Tyler the Creator! Must have been summer 2011 or 2012 somewhere around then and i'm going back to college after summer and i walk in and i i notice something is different pretty much everyone is either wearing a five panel supreme hat an all over print button up shirt some vans little to my knowledge we were in the midst of a culture shifting moment in time and it was all because of one song this song changed my life and my family and my friend's life. <laughs> and it goes like this. The Yonkers video was released February 10th, 2011. In just a few weeks, this video had gained a million views. And honestly, that would have been impressive if this was a big major artist, major label. But this was a completely unknown rapper. He started rapping like Jada Kiss for like two hours. Niggas don't know that that beat was made as a joke. I made that beat in literally eight minutes. I remember Clancy was just like, you need a video. I was like, I don't know, I'll eat a roach and like throw up and like kill myself. They, they blew up, now he has an album out that's uh, independently through a small independent label in Europe. And Tyler Creator, they were on the cover of Billboard, Odd Future, Killed South by Southwest, Coachella. As you can imagine, the, these new fans, they were, you know, your average Andes, they're probably coming across this video and then scrolling down to leave a nice comment. Awesome song, buddy, keep it up. But then they notice something. Golf Wang, swag, OFWGKTA. And average Andes, thinking, what am I reading? Is this a cult or something? There was something going on behind this video that was much deeper than just a viral hit. Fuck Steve Harvey! He's got money, golf wing. Welcome to Austin, Texas. Swag. Did you ever meet your father? Uh, I think I did at 12, supposedly, but I don't really know. That's what my mom said, but. My mom moved to Sacramento when I was 16. I stayed in LA with my grandmother. She was old as shit. I didn't really have much growing up. Like I, I woke up on May 10th, 2011 on my grandma's floor like, oh shit, I should go to Best Buy and buy my fucking album that came out today. Outside of just like killing yourself at the end, eating a roach, that video is beautifully filmed. Yes. The, the silhouettes, it's an well, it's that's a, cause, like, one I shot. Care. It's, 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 I have notebooks with just every shot done. Like mm -hmm. so I directed all of my videos to end all the art. I do everything. <laughs> Kitty cat. Shitty rapper, any hat for shitty Growing rap. up, Tyler wasn't really the cool kid. You know, he was he was the kid that was out skateboarding, taking photographs, drawing on his books, obsessing over old vinyls and films. We've always been a fucking outcast and shit. And it's kind of cool because it's just really going to make us fucking great in the future. And Tyler was like a double outcast because, well, to put it bluntly, he wasn't white. Seventh grade, they used to fuck with me because I was in a... I wore uh, had black trucker hats and fucking the shiny fucking little accessories, like all black, black fucking slipknot and good Charlotte tees and shit. Just, they used to call me white boy and shit. And I hated that shit. Like, why can't I just be a fucking human? In the 2000s, youth culture was certainly more fragmented. You know, if you were the type of kid who probably liked rock music, there was a good chance you were wearing baggy jeans, wearing DC trainers, you had a skateboard and you were probably white. But then you had Tyler. Who the hell am I? She's her inner self talking. <laughs> my, my friend Earl said this in a song, but I was too white for the black kids and I was too black for the white kids. So I kind of didn't really fit much into a, um, into a, you know, a, a certain spot. 2006 was such an important year. Mm. Ice Cream Team came out. I would like to introduce to you the ice cream skaters, what do I call y'all? What, what's, what's your correct attribute, shall I say? Cream team. Cream team. What that shit did for a sector of black kids that didn't want to like gangbang or play sports. You had these niggas really just like skateboarding and just, I don't know, just kind of being weird. What do you think of Pharrell Williams? The, the singer? Yeah. 
He's fucking rad. For real, can you look right here? It was Easter 2002 and I heard the song Tape You from In Search Of on the radio. And ever since I found out who that was, I've been a f***ing stan for the Neptunes and clips and just that That's whole dope. As a peer, but also as someone who's kind of inspired you musically and the way that he approached chords and all the things that matter to you. Oh, it's nah, kind I love of that man. That man's my damn father. I worked at Starbucks and FedEx and oh my God. FedEx was so depressing. It was just the spirit there, just older dudes like, just pushing boxes, but okay with it. And it it scared the living hell out of me, so I quit. And I just knew in my fucking soul that that's not for me. Like, I'm gonna find my own path. Like, let me fuck up. Um, my original idea was a magazine, which included everything I was into. It turned into a collective, and I met some of them at a skate park. And while I gathered all these people, and it didn't come to fruition, the magazine I wanted, we became this thing called Our Future. Before we continue with this video, I want to give a massive shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring. Having a good looking website is so important these days in business. And so many people overlook it, probably because it sounds like a big job. And it sounds very expensive, but luckily for you, Squarespace has you covered. With tons of incredible looking templates, you can pick and change them to fit your brand perfectly. It's very simple, it's very easy, and it's actually fun making a website on Squarespace. There's loads of built-in tools that can just take your brand to that next level. Things like appointment scheduling or members only content, and even email email marketing. So many people will judge your business based on how your website looks. So why not give yourself an advantage against the competition? Be sure to check out squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant and to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. They were very different to the celebs of that era who were completely controlled by their record labels. Like, you would only see them in music videos or once or twice a year on the Ellen show. And they were just like you. You know, they were using the same websites that you were using. Tyler, the creator of Odd Future. I'm also known as R. Kelly. I'm Jasper. Fuck you, Mike. I'm not even Mike. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck is Mike, nigga? Okay. You could directly ask them questions, commenting on their, their content, which I know sounds normal now, but back then, you there was no way of contacting Justin Bieber. But here you had Tyler, the creator, having an argument with you on Twitter. This did something very unique for Odd Future and Tyler Creator. It made them more than just musicians that you would buy their CD. In fact, they gave away the music for free mostly. And it made them like this group of people that you kind of felt like you knew on a personal level. Prior to the release of Yonkers, Tyler had created a cult following for Odd Future that would turn into something that no one could have anticipated. The latest development from a gang of Los Angeles rappers called Odd Future, or as their aunties know them, the Odd Future Wolf Gang kill them all expletive expletive. What about your lyrics? What about them? What are you saying in your lyrics? Nothing. Shit to piss old white people off like you. It's that BuzzFeed office and half the people there didn't like me. Why? <laughs> Austin police have busted a rapper performing at a South by Southwest venue for inciting a crowd into a mob. The South by Southwest incident. Bunch of kids came in. No one got hurt. And cops show up like, hey, come here and put me in handcuffs. And oh, no, film this. No, film this. Everybody film this. Turn on the camera, bro. Some interesting news for you. Tyler, the creator, has been banned from the UK for five years. Yeah, Literally. it was Australia. It was uh, the whole UK. It was New Zealand. For lyrics, old lyrics from like Bastard. It's a lyric from VCR, number 10. And it's a lyric from Goblin, the song Tron Cat, number seven. And that's it. You had criticized Mountain Dew for a uh, commercial that Tyler, the creator, was behind. You actually called it the most racist commercial in history. Yes, I do remember that. Someone that named Boyce Watkins uh, decided to see that and saw some negative stuff in it. And then Mountain Dew didn't want any bad light on them. So they decided to back out and just let me be and be there alone. Would Odd Future have made it in 2021 so oh, fucking fuck crazy? No. You guys oh, would have never made that again. But no. we, we came at the right time where the like- The last moment. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You could still be crazy. You could still be, you could still be a kid and fuck up. And I'm like, yo, what if they got me out of here in 2011? 
Like, what if they got me out of here in mm. 2011? Mainstream media hated him because of his violent, non-politically correct lyrics that were very dark and aggressive. And ironically, as he'd now become successful, some of his original fans had decided they no longer liked him. You know, because he had sold out. He was too mainstream. Hip-hop, as a whole, didn't really accept him either. He was kind of like the weirdo skater kid. He didn't fit the mold of what was expected of hip-hop artists. Nowadays, you have rappers that have nails in their head and that's just that's normal apparently but back then to be a rapper you needed to wear sunglasses in interviews and have been shot at least five times and then on top of all that there were people like me who had discovered him too late and would criticize him for being just a shallow mainstream fad yet somehow with all of this hate from every angle none of the pressure ever got to him and niggas bringing up like old lyrics and shit of mine trying to get me out of here like bitch i was for real cancel nigga i couldn't i got kicked out of countries like suck my whole dick i used to like our feature but when they got big and was on mtv i didn't like them anymore you know why because they got mainstream and i'm a hipster try to push you to the side and keep doing that and it's like 10 years late i'm still here bro my career has only been doing this only been on this niggas who was the hottest shit in 2012 where the fuck they at right now niggas push me to the side and give me no that nigga weird uh the and we no, could no, 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 and I'm fucking here right now. Despite the criticism, it didn't matter. Tyler the Creator did have a very loyal fan base. People loved him. It wasn't just they enjoyed the music. They were obsessed with all things Tyler, anything he did. In a very short time, Tyler was building an empire. Beyond the music and headlining major shows and festivals, he'd created his own record label. He had also created his own fashion brand and he had his own TV show called Loiter Squad. Tyler had this ability to push his personality and not just the music. I think so much of his loyal fan Fan base came from his ridiculous interviews. Him and the whole of Odd Future were just always taking the piss. They were just rebellious, outrageous, and just funny. And honestly, it felt just very organic. If something like this happened now, I would probably assume that a record label has said, guys, we need you to act edgy. Have a bit of bravado. Maybe put some nails in your hair. It didn't feel like a gimmick. It felt just this was how they were and they were being themselves. I would just draw, draw which I still do, and just be on just make stuff out of boredom. It's just shit that I want to wear. I've tried to buy that shit, I can't buy that uh, shit. Duh, nigga, them shit is gone. gone. It seems good, there's a line around the block. Yeah, it's just cool. Just to get in here. Just to get in to buy stuff, right? I know! A lot of people would say that Tyler Crater was one of the catalysts for the for the streetwear movement that came, like the hype beast stuff. He was always wearing Supreme, and then just after all of his interviews, Supreme just went insane. And this kind of fusion of the hip hop and the skate world really broke down the border between like white youth culture and black youth culture. They kind of joined together. Now, white skater kids listen to rappers who weren't just Eminem. Because I love Tyler. I grew up watching him like this, what he is culturally, so. You know, me and Tyler have a lot of respect for each other, a lot of love for each other. <laughs> uh, Tyler's the GOAT, though. Tyler is crazy. OF, WGKTA was my childhood from like uh, 10 to high school, I think. So my GG Allen was Tyler. Okay, Tyler that's, the that's fair. That was Never shoved a banana in his ass no, on stage that I we know like of. He, he, he said it in the freestyle, though. Oh, he right. said, I shoved a bundle of bananas in my ass. Ooh. And if you want to laugh, I stick a fucking bundle of bananas in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> At just like 19, 20 years old, Tyler, his life was going incredibly well. And it would be around, I can probably work it out, 2016. This is my profile picture. You can see yeah, I've got a fake Supreme hat, 10 pounds Amazon basics bright blue hoodie. It was around about here, 2016, that I had finally given Tyler the Creator a chance. And it wasn't his albums, it wasn't Yonkers, but in fact, it was his freestyles. You could be written. Badass bitch. Big ass titties, man. Got fucking AK size of a fucking minivan. Woo! Listen. <laughs> It's a big ass guy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really watch basketball, but I play with a couple balls. Me and Vincent having threesomes. No. Rolling up the weed crumb. Nigga. Me and Flex looking in the index for buff net niggas just for some hot butt sex. Mm. Call me wavy the way that I'm tapping you. All black guns like I'm going to war with Africa. They got a problem. <laughs> After seeing Tyler Crater on Sway, 
I was hooked. I must have spent hours going through his freestyles, his various interviews. And then from there, I went and looked back at all the odd future videos, all the skate videos. And then I finally found his music. But you see, by 2016 and 2017, the odd future wave was kind of over. And so there was me, you know, 2016, going through these videos. And honestly, it kind of felt like I was walking through an abandoned amusement park. Every single comment that I would look at was, man, I miss Odd Future, I miss these days, I miss the old Tyler. And it was in that moment that I realized, shit. I missed an entire era of history, a moment in pop culture, a collective moment, because I was a fucking hipster wanker. Tyler, uh, what, what's going on with your crew? I mean- and So I go on my old fucking Tumblr where we post photos, and it dates back to like 2010. And I'm just seeing all these old ass photos uh, where it's like 20 of us just like, outside of stores we used to kick it at. And I'm just like, oh man, damn, this is crazy. Like, God, I kind of missed all my friends and stuff, wow. And I tweeted like, although uh, those seven letters isn't really a thing, like that, like those are still my niggas for life. Right. I see it happen to a lot of artists. Oh, people like this, let's make five million. And it's like, no, just make that and then move the fuck on. And again, that's how people get stuck. <laughs> do you ever want to do things musically other than rap? Like, I really want to sing, but my my tone of voice is too deep to do what I want. Meeting Pharrell was crazy, because, like, like, I've been, like, a fucking diehard, obsessive stan since I was, like, 11. And I'm, like, stressing to this nigga. Like, I'm sick of fucking coming up with melodies and having other people sing it. I'm like, my voice is too deep. Like, nigga, you ain't never heard of Barry White? And I'm like, oh, well, oh, well. Uh, he was like, nigga, Isaac Hayes. I was like, I'm, uh, uh. he was like, shut the fuck up. Go listen to them and figure it out. Tyler had done a ton of very rap centric and heavy albums. And it was time for him to move into a new lane, creating something more melodic and more R&B. And in 2017, when he released Flower Boy, to be quite honest, he had turned off a lot of his old fans. This new sound was entirely different. The edgy wolf era of Tyler was, was gone, but something interesting started to happen. This new sound had attract a new audience. A new generation who hadn't grown up on the odd future days was discovering Tyler for the first time. And it was funny because they came across him when he was melodic and calm. They were completely oblivious to the days where he was rioting and being banned from countries. Tyler had completely changed and somehow had managed to find even more success. What the fuck happened to you, dog? Like. I like Answer where you cried about your dad and then this song where you were sad and when you were broke and shit. And I'm like, yeah, dude, like that was cool four years ago, but like life is really cool right now. And there'd be some kid on Twitter be like, he may not like the new talent that raps about all the nice things he has. And I think for some it. people they're like, this is vapid, this is superficial. You just like all the other rappers, but you know, some, some kids think it's inspirational. And I was with Lionel two weeks ago and I was like, yeah, look at how these kids are dressed. And someone was like, yeah, you know that's because of you. <laughs> and I was like, huh, I mean, maybe. And, I, and I'm aware of the influence we've had on certain sh but I don't think I'll know how much deeper it goes aside from some people starting to wear certain shirts or... Not exaggerating, Tyler the Creator was one of the main influences in my life. My name is Jimmy the Giant. It's because of Tyler the Creator. I used to run a parkour brand called Marrero Gang and pretty much we were just trying to be Odd Future. It was much more than colorful hoodies and five panel hats. It was a story of a kid just like us who created something incredible, rose to the heights of success and told you that you can do it too. I probably haven't <laughs> been, I probably haven't been uh, supportive of your music since you've dropped. Took us eight years. Nice meeting you, sir. You're absolutely right. They're slowly starting to think I'm cool. At like, first, they mean? thought I was weird. My whole life, I felt like a stepchild. Tried out for drama club. I got in and got kicked out within an hour because she said I was too hyper. Ninth grade, they wouldn't let me join band class because I couldn't read music. All that happened, I said, fuck them. I didn't let none of that shit stop me from doing anything that I wanted to do. I, and I'm, I say this with every bone in my body. Thank you all. If you enjoyed this video, check me out on Twitch. I'm doing all the research for my content live on Twitch. Links below. Peace.